Forgot how to do my intros, it's been a while. <laughs> Welcome to That's Good Sports, I'm Brandon. I've been off the grid vacationing Ted Kaczynski style, Perna. That's a romantic way to ask your wife to go to the mountains, isn't it? Hey honey, you wanna do a Ted Kaczynski style getaway? We can embrace his distaste for modern technology, detoxify from the internet, and you know, just not do the whole bomb mailing thing. Maybe ride some ATVs instead. I was on the Oregon coast and then in the Colorado mountains, mostly away from the internet, not reading or bettering my mind or any of that nerd shit, mostly just 10xing my alcohol consumption and pretending to have profound thoughts while staring into nature. So that's why I haven't posted for a while and I guess a bunch of shit happened while I was gone. So today I wanna catch up. Mostly for myself, and I guess for you watching with what happened in the world of sports recently. From hockey players getting arrested over a bar tab, to American women being so much better at soccer than American men, to whatever I can pretend is NFL news. And that's good sports. Please, if you're new to this YouTube channel, s subscribe here. Consider subscribing. I do football videos pretty regular regularly, except for just recently because I was on vacation. I do have Big Dick Patreon shoutouts for Daniel Escobar, Ethan Kennedy, Charlie, Angela Berry, Jay Payne, upping to a $5 donation, Jackson Schwartz, Angelo, Bill, Philip, completing the one name crew. Nicholas Ruiz and Cole DeBear, who wants me to shoot out his Twitter for becoming a big dick player, at Bear underscore Joseph. Thank you all for your donations. If you want to support this channel, you can do it at patreon.com slash that's good sports. That's how I keep the lights on. And thank you guys. Now to start, this isn't really important news, but as a Broncos fan, I really miss Aqib Tlaib. Not just his play on the field, but the way he describes things in interviews. Anything he says, really. Tlaib was on SportsCenter uh, about a week ago, which is a somewhat well-known sports show on a cable channel, and he was asked if it was weird playing with a head coach that is the same age as him, and this was his response. Same age as you. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's got to be interesting, right? Yeah, it is. <laughs> he's so ahead of his time, though, man. He'd get to talking football, and he sounds like he's 60 years old. You know what I'm saying? So Sounds like he's 60 years old? I know what Tlaib meant, but the first thing I imagined was Sean McVay saying something like, Well, back in my day, concussions was a good for the brain, and we done grab a wide receiver right by the balls, 20 yards down the field, to keep them from catching a Jim Thorpe punt. I'm not sure why Sean McVay is a 100-year-old prospector in my head, but he is, and only when Aqib Tlaib says it, he is. What I do know is Jim Thorpe is considered one of, if not the greatest athletes in human history, which is why I never understood why his great-great-grandson, Landry Clark, sucks so bad at football in Dillon, Texas, or why his Native American blood produced a grandchild with such red hair. Now, the U.S. women's national team won the World Cup. In order to accomplish this amazing feat, this amazing, Award of soccer excellence, all they had to do was defeat Thailand, Chile, Sweden, Spain, France, England, and the Netherlands. Literally only countries with universal health care. Which after doing that, it seems very hypocritical for the women's team to preemptively decline going to the White House. It's like pick a message and stick to it, ladies. I just... I just don't know why the soccer team and the president can't get along. They have so much in common. They're all gifted athletes. They have crazy hair. They're both associated with eagles. And they only have to win something once every four years. One member of the women's national team, and this is how I make this about football, Julie Johnston Ernst, uh, her husband is Eagles tight end, Zach Ertz. And it was pretty cool to see her celebrating with Zach on social media. 
you would assume their children will be winning the genetic lottery. But I wouldn't want to have two parents who were both on championship winning teams. Can you imagine the pressure? Sorry, Dad, I play tight end for the fucking New York Jets. I can't help the fact that I'm better than everyone on the team and we keep losing. I will never be you, so when will you just accept the fact that all I am is a perennial thousand yard tight end catching passes from Peyton Manning's grandson? That's all I'll ever be, Dad! <laughs> Why did you leave mom? <laughs> Sorry to break it to the Ertzes. They don't, they don't make it as a couple. The reason Peyton Manning was so good in the NFL was because his father never won shit for the Saints. It's our responsibility as men to underachieve in life so the bar is low enough for our offspring to clear. Now, Olivia Colpo is apparently frolicking with Christian McCaffrey in Mexico now that she and Danny Amendola are no longer an item. Knowing her type as short white guys who can run pretty fast means I have a chance with her. The only guys I have to beat out are Ryan Switzer, Adam Humphreys, and Cole Beasley. You may know Amendola and her had an on and off again relationship, but as long as Christian McCaffrey is never traded to the Dolphins or Lions, I think this relationship has a real chance at going the distance. Olivia has made it very clear if your boss wears shorts in a snowstorm, or if you're relying on a combination of Brock Osweiler and Ryan Tannehill to get you touchdowns, she simply cannot respect you as an athlete, nor as a man. Those are her rules. You shall abide by them. And here's a That's Good Sports First. Hockey news. Ha, ha, hockey news. Should whatever happens on the ice stay on the ice? Sonny Milano from the Columbus Blue Jackets and AJ Greer were arrested in New York City on charges of assaulting a 28-year-old acquaintance who promised them $1,200 bottle service that ended up costing $2,300. Okay, so maybe it wasn't on the ice, it was in a bar and at 6.35 a.m., but shouldn't hockey players be allowed to settle life disputes like they do on the ice? The real question is who has enough energy to argue, let alone fight another person after staying up all night and into the morning? If you wanna fight me, Adam Rank, and I know you're listening, you're gonna have to catch me between my peak hours of 5 and 5.30 p.m. And I would appreciate an official Twitter invitation, Justin Bieber style, for the fight so I can carbo load on fettuccine Alfredo like Michael Scott before we battle. Between the fight and the arrest, neither are important here. What's important is that two pro hockey players, after a night out paying for bottle service, went home without any women just like you and me, proving yet again, despite requiring more athleticism than all other sports and being arguably more entertaining at times than football, there is absolutely nothing sexy about being a below average NHL player. Now, former Patriots linebacker Teddy Bruschi suffered a stroke last Thursday morning. No, not the kind of Patriot stroke Robert Kraft pays 40 bucks an hour for, a real life-threatening stroke. He wrote that he lost the use of his right arm, had trouble balancing, and was slurring his speech, which are the signs of a stroke and the signs hockey players experience right before trying to fight at 6.35 a.m. Brewski's wife took him to the hospital, and today he says he's doing much better. If you remember, Teddy Bruschi originally had a stroke in 2005 after the Patriots' third Super Bowl that caused him to miss seven weeks that season. Imagine playing football after a stroke. I can barely stand up after eating too much, and it's probably why I've always respected Teddy Bruschi. He's a genuine badass. Not the kind that get all up in your face about it like, say, Tony Soprano. Much more like a Mike Ehrmantraut from Breaking Bad. Nike is doing a great job of galvanizing people that already wear Nike and alienating the people that never have and never will wear Nike. This time, they discontinued their Betsy Ross flag-inspired shoes because of a complaint by, you guessed it, Colin Kaepernick. Publicly, Kaepernick was concerned about the 13-star design because of its association with white nationalist groups. Privately, though, Cap said, a seamstress? A seamstress? 
I ain't selling no fucking shoe designed for a seamstress. Sewing is not a sport. I didn't take a knee or learn to throw a football 60 fucking yards for the fucking sewing guild of America to get a shoe. Here are my thoughts. If you really care one way or another about Colin Kaepernick in the year 2019, you need to move on. Was he blackballed? Probably a little. Was he a starting caliber quarterback at the time he was getting blackballed? Probably not. Should you move on with your life? Absolutely. And I'm talking about both sides of the aisle here. Those of you who side with Kaepernick and those of you who support the Sewing Guild of America. Move on. It turns out this was basically a marketing ploy from the very beginning. So the next time Nike comes out with a Ronald Reagan war on drugs themed shoe and quickly pulls it off the shelf because Megan Rapino denounces it, you guys need to know not to take the bait this time. Now I inexplicably started this episode talking about Ted Kaczynski and I sort of ended it talking about Ted Bruschi. Why? Well, because I find it fascinating that the name Ted hasn't been ruined by a terrorist in Ted Kaczynski and a serial killer in Ted Bundy, or a guy who looks like he could be both in Ted Nugent. People are still naming their kids Ted, which illustrates just how terrible Adolf Hitler and Osama bin Laden were, and how goddamn likable Ted Danson is. Ted Danson single-handedly saved the name Ted from ruin. A lot of my friends are having kids, and none of them have even considered the names Adolf or Osama. But Ted has made the final five a couple of times. Maybe if Ted Danson had been named Adolf Danson, the Saints' backup quarterback would be Adolf Bridgewater. Or Seth MacFarlane's movie about a stuffed bear that comes to life would be called Osama instead of Ted. You think Mark Wahlberg is starring in a movie called Osama? I don't think so. And that's why women soccer players should be paid more money than the president. I may, uh, I may have mixed up my points here at the end, but like I said, I drank a lot on vacation. And uh, it's, it's definitely weird that we're the same age, but... Thanks for watching another episode of That's Good Sports. Please subscribe here on YouTube. Subscribe, and if you get 100 of your friends to subscribe, and you can prove it to me, I will send you my love. Also, give out Will Key 6 a follow on Twitter. He helps me write football stuff here. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, at Brandon Perna, if, you know, you're into that shit.